Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Hi everyone, and welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach, and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here, and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the you know, his non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Hello everyone. So today I have a pleasure to play and to play banter against you. And I, I see a lot of challenges here. So let's pick a, a random one and let's let's get started. Okay. Okay, so let's play the cards bus structure. Okay, he doesn't take on d5, so it's not gonna be 
because of structure, Ragozin then. Okay, queen c2. Of course, it's a playable option, but I think it's not the most challenging, considering it's just um, the names of queen c2 and knight of three combination. Yeah. And now good to think whether to play c5. Okay, let's play c5. Okay, c takes. It takes, that's good. At least I've got a target to play against. The Isolani, unless he plays c5. Okay, so now I, of course, don't want to take on c4, only when he plays bishop e2 or bishop d3 first to save the tempo. I can play knight h5, which is standard stuff here, but then just bishop g3, I guess. So let's let just develop pieces. Okay, bishop seven. Okay, I will take five. It's of course vital vital to establish the control over the d5 square. And it's pretty comfortable already for me. No bishop b3 is a threat. I would really love to play rook c8 here, but by now it's not an option because you can just take. But the idea is to play knight b3 first and only then rook c8. After knight b3, he has knight c6, maybe, but then at the very least, I can just take on c6. Perhaps queen g5 is even better. Okay, queen b1, it's probably a blunder. I can play queen g5 followed by knight d2 or knight d2 straight away. I think it's working for me. Rook takes queen g5, it's a double threat. If knight f3, I can just take on f3. So it feels like I'm already winning. Trading, queen, trading queens, of course, is the simplest road to convert the advantage. That's page five. Ninety five rook takes e five was an issue. Yeah, let's just bring the king into play. Not strictly necessary, but just looking nice.
And yeah, so he resigned. And that was a nice trick, 92. Nice beginning. Let's see if my opponent really expected me to accept the challenge he had sent. Okay, I guess I have to abort. Unfortunately, that one. Yeah, let's play the Catan. Of course, bishop e7 and d takes c4 is the very main line of the Catalan. Here a6 is the most common. Queen d6 is strange. I think they play it um, only after knight d5 instead of queen c2. It should be a pretty comfortable edge for white here, mostly because of his poor uh, c8 bishop. This kind of a problem always in these lines for black. Let's play b3 because I would love to play e4, of course, but after e4, knight takes e4 was an issue. And maybe it should be two first and d4. Taking on c4 would only strange on my center here. But basically, there is there are no good options for him, I'm afraid. I guess b6. OK, queen a5 makes sense as well. Let's play e5. I just want to bring my knight on d6 square. I mean, 94 c5 and 96 is the idea. It's a question about move order. If 94 c5, then d5, I think. And it's good for me, so I can start with 94 query. Okay, c5. This is clearly a wonderful position for me. He basically doesn't have any any active piece here. And it's not going to have for a very, very long time. Let's play a four. With the obvious idea of playing a five. OK, maybe it takes. The question is if I 
really want to play this f5. It might just open some lines for him. Let's improve our position first a bit. Now f5, I guess it's better than the move before. Rook takes a seven is too tempting just to let it go. I'm not sure it's actually winning by force, but okay. After rook takes f seven, I, I mean he's not going to get checkmated soon, but of course being queen up helps. All right. So that was one of probably my best performance ever in the Catalan. I'm not really a Catalan player, as you probably know. Yeah, let's try Catalan once more. I've got a question about what about the opening choices? Do you think I'm not in the right mood to play against the French? So let's play d4 today. Yeah, that's basically, I mean, one of the strategies, of course, if, um, but in general, with white, you just tend to, um, I have to abort that one. Um, you just tend to play a lot of things because you are less predictable. And, you have to, um, and you have to get, I mean, some play. Because if you are only an E4 player or D4 player, there is risk that um, there will be some serious preparation done against you, and and it might just vanish, peter out. So yeah, basically playing everything in the first move with white makes some sense. Okay, knight b5 is the line. The idea is to play c4. More rook should bind, but it's probably a worse version for white. I mean, it surely is because of his knight on a3. Still, if I don't do anything concrete, I can be slightly worse. There are, of course, ideas of playing quick d5. Like Kasparov did. I mean, maybe not strictly in this position, but in general, in this kind of structures. And I think I would just play b6 and bishop b7. Okay, queen b3, knight d7. It's kind of normal stuff. Um, bishop b7 or bishop f6 is the question. Let's start maybe with bishop f6. Yeah, so he sacrifices the pawn on e4. And if I don't take, I mean, for my dark square, beautiful dark square bishop, if I don't take, he will play knight ab1, which is reasonable, of course, taking into account that his rook is already on c1. So, I mean, I'm actually not sure if 
This is so great for me, to be honest. Let's play 95 and the bishop b7. Yeah, he can regain the pawn probably with some advantage here. Maybe even not some, some concrete advantage. Rook d4, bishop b7, f3. And c5 and rook d6 is the line I'm expecting to happen. I almost blundered the knight actually because after before knight cd7 I didn't see f4. Okay, bishop f4 is not bad for sure, but I'm not that much afraid of it. Let's play e5 to shut down the bishop. Now of course rook d8 is the idea to challenge his beautiful rook, rook a d8. Yeah, so now it's probably okay for me. At rook d1, I, do I have knight d4? Yeah, I think I have rook takes, rook takes, rook takes queen c5. And after, uh, I mean, the rook is pinned, he cannot move. And if he takes bishop e5, then knight takes e5, and the knight c6 would be an issue for him. Okay, let's. Now he might want want to take this. Yeah, it's not so simple. Okay, let's take this. I mean, I'm not sure, but I got to be a bit quicker. H3 now is a must for him, I think. That's. I'm not so sure about this. Now, at least, I have an easy play against his king. Yeah, but it's still not so simple. Bishop takes b6, followed by rook c7. is annoying. What is this? And I see for it's nice, but probably not very frightening. Queen e8. Oh, it feels like there should be a checkmate here. It's actually not so simple to give a checkmate here. Okay, let's let's try this. Yeah, of course it's wing for me, but the question is if I actually managed to convert it. Should be doable for sure. No, it's not. Probably. Okay, let's. Let's hope before. Yes. Okay, that was. Well, that was not so quite lucky, I would say. I mean, I was winning, of course, but given the time I had, it um, I should have lost. I think. I mean, be flagged. There was a question if I, uh, if I'm going to play in Norway chess, 
No, I'm not, unfortunately. Okay, let's play my beloved Zemish. C5 was the main move instead of knight d7. This is, of, this is, of course, also kind of some tabia, I think. Knight b6 now might be the idea. Unless the takes v5 works. Seems to be the case. Knight takes c4, e takes f6. Okay, now I want to play bishop h6 followed by h4, h5. A standard attacking pattern in these structures. Uh, it's actually pretty, pretty unpleasant for black, I think. I mean, of course, there are some, some ways to defend against it, but um, in general, I mean, knight, knight b6 is the idea, which is a bit annoying to deal with. Let's play h4. Let's see what he does. Okay, after b5, maybe I can just ignore it. Play h5. After b4, knight b1. It's probably good for black, but. Yeah, actually, I didn't see that my pawn on c4 would be hanging. That's kind. Yeah, that's a serious issue, actually. My concept, but well, there is there isn't any choice right now. Yeah, so queen takes a2. It's very normal. Then knight g3. It's also kind of an attacking move. Knight a5 might be the idea in various moments. Okay, now I think I have to do something concrete. At least would be very nice to do so. Knight a5, then just bishop takes h6. Okay, so just, let's just take and take on d4. Not going for a direct checkmate, but now at least he can play knight c5 because of h6. Queen takes d6, I think. It's nearly winning for me because after knight takes c4, there is still h6, followed by queen takes f6. And of course, the crucial thing is that the pawn b2 is defended. The thing, the very thing he probably missed, and queen takes b2 was the only move, but two knights should be good enough with a couple of pawns. Okay, let's let's play against the rear Magnus. Okay, so C six. He might want to play. Um, some stone wall after e3, f5. So I played knight c3. And okay, now it's probably going to be very interesting.
yeah, it's probably going to be the so-called not a boom variation. A very crazy opening. Actually, I gave it a shot with black very, very long time ago. And it should be seven, maybe it takes. Yeah, so the position, of course, is very complex. I have two bishops and nice center. He, on the, on the other hand, has um, a very dangerous pawns. The queen side. Now it's sort of important to fight uh, the e4 square. Okay, knight c5 is nice, but I can just retreat. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. Maybe it's okay. Play, just play a free. Yeah, I'm not sure, but maybe it was, it's probably the main line. I mean, I haven't analyzed this line for ages because it's actually very unlikely to happen in the real game. Because the specific move order in the opening is needed. All right, so now let's play e4. Now after the queen takes e4, there is e5 uh, with a double attack. Bishop takes h7 is also an agenda there. e5 is standard response in such cases. Yeah, actually. Actually, it's probably very good for black because after d5, there is knight d7. Yeah, but he played knight d7 straight away. So he still wants to play knight c5 in some moment, I think. After bishop a4, let's say. Yeah, so probably it's anything that but great. Or what I did. Let's play bishop d3. Yeah, because it's very difficult actually to generate some attack. I mean, I have all my pieces on the queen side. And after d5, e5, as said, it's a very good blockading move. Okay, so now I think I have to play something. Like c5, maybe. After e takes d4. Actually, I don't see a good response right now. C6, then bishop takes C6, bishop B5, and bishop takes D4, knight D5. Yeah, I think I totally misplayed it, to be honest. Um, okay, let's play just something in C2. Yeah, I mean, I'm clearly worse after 95, or basically some other move. But at least the position is sort of complicated. So I clearly have some chances here. Okay, d3. Let's play queen d2 or f2. Queen d2, maybe. No, oh, queen takes c5 was very unfortunate. Yeah, so the important thing, I mean, I got from this game is not to play not a boom with white without properly analyzing it first. It's kind of useful information, I believe. OK, 
Okay, let's play Mephisto. Yeah, so that was my sleep. Yeah, unfortunately it happens. It's one of the cons of online chess, of course, but yeah, what to do? Play rook b8. Honestly, it's been pretty random what I've been doing here in this game. I mean, I should be slightly worse probably because the combination of those moves through BA D6 wasn't that great. But I think uh, now I'm maybe not better, but um, yeah, very, very, very comfortable position at the very least because um, I got this right score bishop. The thing white um, like should never allow this very easily, but I think he just blundered, I mean, missed knight a5, and the fact that there was b3 after any bishop retreat. Yeah, so I think after a5, instead, was pretty, pretty uncomfortable for me. But it's not that I'm no winning here with black, it's just a comfortable position. And now c4, I think. So now I must be better. And just stay. I'm not sure if that's the best move in the position, but actually it's very difficult to to realize what is the best and why. Now I've I think I'm almost winning Hippon by force because I don't quite see a way how he's going, going to defend his pawn on c4. Um, I mean, after rook fc8, that is rook b1. So maybe rook bc8. I mean, now he can play rook b1. And if I have a tree with the bishop, that's c5. So it's not. Um, not that super easy.
Yeah, I think queen c6. Should do a drop then. After c5, queen c6. There is a checkmate threat. And after, let's say, knight f3, takes c5, the pawn e5 is it hanging. So, yeah, so I'm probably winning the pawn, actually. I'll just grab the pawn. Yeah, I'm allowed to. Well, not that smart, probably, but yeah, even if I lose the C pawn, then of course I'm still much better with two bishops and extra pawn. Okay, time to activate some pieces. Pretty suspicious move for me for some reason, but I don't see a direct refutation. Let's play h6. Yeah, I see, see the pawn. I take the pawn, of course. But d3. Bishop d6 is a nice trap, I think. After the bishop takes h6. Yeah, the, the idea was that after the bishop takes h6, queen g6. And after the bishop e3, rook takes e3. And in the variation, rook on b1 was potentially hanging. Uh, if the rook would take on uh, e3, and if queen, then bishop c5, and it was just, it was just losing the queen for free. Let's calculate if there is anything direct. I don't think so. And this is interesting line. It's of course very similar to um, to classical ex uh, exchange variation in the French, but 
here with the inclusion of IC3 Bishop before, it's, um, I mean, a bit different. And often uh, Bishop on before is apparently not that great. Yeah, so it looks looks like some prep here. And C5 is, of course, very tempting. And then I think maybe D takes C5 is the idea. D4, A3, but I mean, it's kind of kind of shaky. Queen, A5 then. Okay, if A3, then I can just take, play C4, I think. Or maybe even Queen, A5. Okay, I think C4 is good enough. Yeah, it's probably already slightly better for me here. Although it is also reasonably solid. Play knight e7, followed by knight g6, or maybe queen d7. So the idea of knight f5. Yeah, probably queen d7, the knight g3. Knight f5. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable for white here. Actually, I can take on e3. I can do many things here. Okay, let's just take straight knights. Because the pawn on f5 would be pretty, pretty unpleasant to deal with. I mean, in terms of this game, it's probably just smarter to trade it. Of course, this position is better for me, but it's not also not so simple, I think, to make progress here. Let's play G6. Yeah, actually, rook EF1. I mean, I can play rook E7 after that, but I would prefer something else, to be honest, something more direct. Yeah, they don't quite see. And again, I'm a very long on time. I'll just play it through e7. I have completely no clue what I'm going to do next. Maybe queen d6. Yeah, I think so. Just with the idea of just playing king d7 and expelling the queen with a six. Yeah, I said it's better for me, but actually it's... Um, I mean, very, very solid for him, and it's difficult to to find a way how to break his position in no time, especially. So. 
Yeah, that might be pretty challenging. Okay, this I got a pawn. I'm probably going to get flagged, unfortunately. Yeah, now I lost a lot of pawn, a lot of pawns. Rook e5 was. Okay, now maybe there is some chance, but probably. Oh, that was extremely lucky. As you can see, my time. Oh, my time left. Yeah, so basic, basically, um, pretty difficult position. I mean, to, I mean, in real game, of course, or in even Blitz three plus two, it would be just pure torture for him. But in three plus zero, I mean, it was more of a torture for myself. Um, okay, I have to. I have to play against the fan with my picture. Um, let's see what's in the chat. I'm not sure he's here. Oh, it seems he's not here. Okay, so I'm bored. Everyone is, I mean, not there if I play white and want to play the Catalan. So perhaps I should um, make a switch in the opening. Play B6, double fianchetta. Actually, now C5 maybe. It's it's pretty nice for me because there is, of course, no D5 response. It's crucial. And if I got to uh, trade those bishops, it should be fine for me. But I mean, it's very fine for the first player, of course, as well. And if he if he's good to play for here, it would be um, yeah, slightly, slightly, slightly better for him. So probably I should try to postpone it in some way. Now I can play knight c6 or knight a6. Both are pretty tempting to me. Knight c6 was somewhat better. Um, okay, b3. I wonder if there are some tricks in this position. I mean, I can play like d5 here probably, but then just c takes d5. Yeah, just castle. It should be two, I think. Yeah, so it's actually, I mean, I don't see a way how to. To stop his C4 push. The thing is that. Oh, actually, E4 isn't working. It was Knight takes E4, and I fight Knight, and I fought Knight D5. So maybe a move, but then Knight F6 because the king was pinned. 
yeah, but now D5, of course, is, I mean, of course, it doesn't work. So, um, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, let's play queen c5, maybe. Yeah, because this queen and d4 and bishop b2 are pretty annoying. Like, knight d5 was an issue. And here we've got probably a balanced endgame. Maybe it's slightly better for white, but I mean, I like this. I actually prefer this pawn structure for black. I mean, there is easy play, uh, easy idea to play 5f4 in some moment. Of course, it's important not to play too fast because uh, if white is allowed to play a4 and then knight b5, I mean, the pawn on a5 might be just a weakness. But now a5 looks okay. I mean, it's, I'm not really fretting a4 here, but um, yeah, I'm pretending to fret, so. Because now knight d7 and then bishop takes c3 probably or something. Yeah, so it's now it's nice for me, I think. Still is, of course, as you can see, quite solid for him. Actually, rook b7 might be the idea here. Um, the follow up being knight b8, knight c6. And it's very nice maneuver, of course. But still, it's pretty sorry for him. Let's activate the king. H4. I'm not sure about this one, to be honest. It's like a free pawn. Yeah, so that was a nice technical game, of course. I mean, in the end, he was slow on time and started to play sort of randomly, but in general, I think. Rook b7 and followed, followed up by knight b8, knight c6 it was a nice maneuver by me, to be honest. Okay, no more Catalan. I promise. Let's play the Moscow variation, I think it's called. Knight takes d7 is, of course, in the line. Not as popular as Queen takes d7, but there are some advantages of having the knight on d7. I think the drawback is that um, now the plan with c3d4 is like more better for white probably because knight on d7 is not particularly great. And now I got slight edge, like a very comfortable rule up its position, sort of.
by maybe bishop f8 was okay for him with the idea of playing d5. I would have had to play like queen f3 or something in that case. Now it's pretty, pretty easy and pretty uh, uncomfortable for him. It may be already bad. I've got the question um, about b3 in the first move that I sometimes play. Uh, yeah, very, very rarely I do. Um, not really an expert on that. Uh, yeah, and to what, how to respond to f5. Um, yeah, actually f5, I guess, is not so great. I mean, against b3 specifically, because uh, after bishop b2, this I mean, I mean, pawn f5 is kind of kind of weird, and actually, I've heard that. Um, I mean, when I was young, I've been told that um, after f4, uh, the bird of playing um, b6 makes some sense because this diagonal is, you know, kind of. I mean, maybe not open, but sort of weaker than usual. And um, yeah, so here with extra tempo, it should be even better, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess just bishop b2. Actually, wonder after that if knight f6, maybe bishop takes f6 already. It's like uh, clear edge for white. Um, and here I've got too many, too many options to choose from. Um, yeah, so after bishop b2, I guess e6. Yeah, not sure. I mean, maybe even e4 is playable with the idea f takes e4, queen h5 check. And after g6, queen e5 is winning on the spot, I think. So, um, yeah, so I mean, at the very least, why I can play d4 and transpose to some uh, normal Dutch. But I think there is no need to. And probably just developing the pieces first is like a better approach. Don't quite see a mate here. Okay, let's bring another knight on the five. Ah, after bishop b2 d6. Yeah. Yeah, maybe then f4 with white makes sense, actually. Because it's often a reasonable strategy, like. Against Stonewall, for example, if um, I mean, there are players who very much uh, dislike playing against the opening. Uh, like, if White uh, hasn't played Knight of Three before, probably probably F4 makes some sense just to play Stonewall against Stonewall, let's say, but with extra tempo and uh, the pawn being on C4. I mean, with slight, um, with slight superiority, some extra space, so. Just not to blunder here anything. So yeah, I, I guess so. But even a four, it's probably kind of challenging for black. I okay, can win the queen in various ways. Queen h6 is the most natural. Okay, so I've been told that uh, I played eight years old boy. Nice, nice age actually to progress quickly and effortlessly in chess. Of course, given the fact that one can allow to, to play in uh, tournaments. Let's play the Lopez of white this time. Uh, 
Let's see if he's going to play the Marsha. Not quite. Of course, starting with c3 is important because h3 is a mistake due to knight a5 and the bishop is lost. So if you want to reach this position, this very position, then c3 is um, the move order to play, to go. Okay, so now it's going to be a Zaitsev. Let's play g 5 d5. By the way, did you know that Duda in Spanish means doubt? I actually knew that. And actually there are some like other forms, not Duda, but with probably uh, worse meaning, I think. But I, of course, I, I mean, I, I haven't learned Spanish like ever, so don't quite know much about this language. Also in some languages, actually um, some vulgar word. Uh, I'm not sure which language. Um, I, I've been told so by uh, one Polish guy who was the captain um, in some uh, to some team in, in the Olympiads some some years back. Yeah, but and yeah, and, and they uh, and and the teammates teammates like to uh, watch my games because of my name. So yeah, but actually, it's um, in Polish. It's um, I mean, like plural form to the it's instrument, like Scottish instrument. Don't know the name in the, on the name in English, but it's traditional Scottish instrument, so you probably know what I mean. Um, Here I probably get the pawn if I haven't blundered my queen, but I don't quite see, see the way to blunder it. Like there is bishop d5, but then it takes d5, and probably I hope it's working. At the very least, I can give it back some material. Yeah, black has some sort of compensation, but it can be enough in my view. Okay, a5 is reasonable, of course. Mostly due to the fact that there is no a3 response. And I guess I have to play bishop d2. That can make miracles. I'm not sure I know what this is about. Yeah, but of course, the president of Polish is also named Duda. And it's actually from the same area as me, Krakow. Should be free, I guess. Probably there is something better, but let's just play this a free. So that not to worry about this before pawn anymore. Okay. 
three plus one bleed, so I'm not gonna flag him. But hopefully I won't need to. Let's play rook d1. Knight h4 is very tempting to me. Just to launch. Okay, he lost on time. It was 3 plus 1, so I didn't expect to win on time, but yeah, still, rook d3, rook f3 was the idea. The white was better, I think. Not yet winning, but just better. Let's play bishop c4 now. The idea is just to play some sort of, I don't know, Spanish, let's say. I mean, a Spanish because black is going to play e6 or g6, but um, just to play, I mean, normally with white and to avoid uh, to bypass any, any serious theory. One. Yeah, so basically I'm just Playing normally, like in Spanish, Ropes, whatever you call it, and that one, and then going to play d4. Yeah, after d5, I, mean, I can play e5 straight away. I'm not convinced it's, um, I mean, like the best moment to do it. Maybe queen e2 first makes more sense. Let's play the c5 anyway. Now it sort of resembles the Kia. You can see an attack with um, a big difference that there is no bishop on g2, which is kind of not so great piece. But I believe that knight uh, that bishop on b3 can be, can be any worse. Let's play bishop g5. Now we should wait for trying to win the access to the e five square. Actually, knight f e seven might be the best move here for him. But actually, his queen side might be overextended right now. And some c takes before and rook c1. Not necessary in this move order. It could have been strong. Okay, let's take this anyway. Oh. 
All right, so what to do now? Let that be quicker, as always. 95 is very natural, especially since 97 is a threat. Must have missed this queen g4 move. Yeah, but it's still not. Um, I think there isn't anything concrete for me. Okay, now this is a blunder. Okay, so let's play the Nidor now. Okay, 9b3 is of course um, interesting. Interesting line, sideline. Actually, why many called borderline? Because it was like probably the first relatively strong player to use it on a regular basis against very strong opposition. And also scoring um, pretty well. I think he won against Artemiev, Vitashek, Andrew uh, against Gelfand. Yeah, so there are, these are some achievements for sure. Could have played NC first straight away. Not sure why he didn't play that. But I can still do it. Now, now I mean he can castle, but. So it's probably a bit worse version than before, but B5 would be nice if not E5. Let's play E5 maybe. To shut down his bishop on G2. B5. Now it's very similar to H3 line against the Nidor. Now maybe knight f3 is the move. King a1 before knight d5. Not sure about that. And yeah, let's just play. I don't know, should be seven. Bishop g5 is. A move I like, but I'm not sure it's. I know Bishop G5, then of course F4. It doesn't make any sense, so let's attack him. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable, but um, I mean, there isn't um, like, there is nothing wrong with White's position. You can play in ID2, I guess, right away. Um, and now actually, it is a question how to respond to that. If it's that great to take on C4 with pawn. Yeah, pretty, pretty interesting position. Let's play A4. Because after knight takes b takes c4, he, I mean, he can stop both c3 or a3. Yeah, f4, of course, it's reasonable. I think a3. Now after b3, there might be knight b2 move. Obviously, I can also just take. Now also maybe a b. It's probably too much. Yeah, I guess so. 
actually didn't see that FTX E5 is a threat. Like I was really, really fo focused on the queen side. Probably it's not that challenging. I mean, I can just take on B2 and castle or castle straight away at the very least. Um, just just a pawn. Like I mean, in such tactical position, it's probably I think I will just take I, I will take first and only now castle to have some lines open. I think black is just much better. If not winning even already. Or is perhaps too harsh? I don't know. Let's play C3. Because he wanted to play C3 himself. And pawn on C4 would be like working for him more than for me. And now also queen b8 is a threat, which I didn't spot on the very first second, but I mean, c3 move felt very natural to me. Now rook takes a2 must be winning. Bishop a6 is winning trivially. Just wonder if some more spectacular moves like bishop takes g4 are winning. I don't see. I mean, there's no point in playing like that. Yeah, so actually, I mean, he should have played b3 probably in some moment, not allowing me to open, I mean, to allow to play a takes b2, because after that, it was just probably just bad for him. Okay, let's see. Let's see the chat happening. Don't know much about Madrid and Valencia, unfortunately. Haven't been there. Going to be in Madrid, as you all know. There is a question if my aunt beat Kasparov. Uh, no, she didn't, but she drew in Simul. In Katowice, I think in 1993, probably, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and she, needless to say, was very proud of this game. Um, yeah, she was uh, a chess player uh, herself, a former Polish woman champion in 1991. Now, not, not really into chess anymore, but likes to play it. Okay, I have to abort that one. Yeah, there is a question I see about cities in Spain. Haven't been to many. I've been to Barcelona. Yeah, it's indeed quite nice, of course. But one can argue if that's the real Spain, of course. Play the QGA this time. Actually, it's five zero. I didn't realize that.
Okay, six. Now there are, of course, so many moves here. Like in either pos starting position, when white has, I don't know, like 16 sensible choices, I think, something like that, 17. And here also, like, they tried everything. And therefore, it's also probably the move, but I'm not really an expert on that, to be honest. It's free now, I guess. We have Polish opening B5. Yeah, maybe I will. I maybe will play in the last game. I mean, not against E4 or C4, or like C3. Against d4, why not? Okay, so d takes c5 now. Probably queen c7 is like a more playable option. I mean, just more complicated. Maybe bishop e2 is sort of strange. Let's play. Let's take straight away. Yeah, so I'm very comfortable. Right now, probably, maybe maybe even slightly better already. Can include knight b4 first. We'll play b6. After b6, knight d4, I guess, might be the idea. So why not to play knight b4 and then b6? Yeah, but now knight b5 is, of course, the move I, I missed and didn't really want to allow. But after knight b5, at least queen 7 was possible. And so it's very comfortable for me, but I have to do something. Okay, h3. It's not easy to. Uh, like to predict the moves. Queen C3 is running into some, some tempi. Let's play queen seven first. Is there any chance to trap his queen? That's a good question. Okay, as far as it for a while. Bishop seven. Oh, that is actually it's actually bishop b3 the move I didn't spot. Probably wins the exchange, I think. I mean that is bishop c3. But even after bishop c3, maybe bishop of wins the exchange. So no, it doesn't. That is rook takes d8. Yeah, but after that, bishop c3, c3, I can just take and have a positional edge. And a pawn. What has been my most painful loss? Um, yeah, there's been some. There have been some. Um, yeah, probably in, some, in the last round of some event. 
like um, I don't know. For example, losing to Jeffrey Young was very painful in the World Cup 2019 because it was like very um, tense and actually, actually like level match. I mean, we are winning with white uh, all the time and uh, losing with black. So also, I remember the game, um, the last round of Polish Championship back in. Uh, 2014, maybe. I'm not sure about the year when um, I actually lost two last games. I mean, um, lost to Wojtasza in a game that um, I mean he didn't make any many of his uh, any of his own moves. Like all all of his play was a prep basically, and I played a losing novelty. And after that, I still had. Uh, a good shot uh, for the first place, but lost to a overrated player. I mean, probably very hard. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been, of course, a very long time ago. And also, not winning in games up to Satorov was, uh, I mean, I, di I didn't lose that game, but it was very, very annoying in, in Warsaw last year. Yeah, so see frequent before. I mean, probably I can play like that. Queen before bishop b5 and queen takes c3, rook c2 was my idea. Climbing that, um, yeah. I'm gonna win the exchange. Rook c1 was uh, the move I didn't see, but now rook c2. Yeah, but still, I mean, I'm not playing it very well. Um, I'll just play queen d3. Yeah, that also got very long time. Yeah, I don't like this pattern, to be honest. Yeah, now it's like gamble, I think. Yeah, pretty, pretty pathetic play. Let's play with the eight. Wow, that is nice move. Is it a checkmate? Not really, unfortunately. But it's very close. Maybe it should be free. I still have to rook c5, I mean. How is that possible? I don't see it. I just don't see it. Let's play f5. Oh no, that is not, not so great. Yeah, I mean, I might, might very well lose this game in time. Yeah, but king to g5 was probably better. Now I think he has to take on h7 because queen g6 is a legit threat. Ah, I didn't see this one. Yeah, I'm going to lose this. Ah, no, that was nice. That was nice. Manu king maneuver. After the king takes g5, actually, I didn't see anything direct. So um yeah, that's that's nice performance. Of course, I mean I should have uh, realized better, but yeah, it's defense. Okay, let's switch to another opening with white this time. So now it's some Pierce defense, or actually modern, because the knight is still on G8. Is he going to play hippo? Okay, he is.
Let's play f5. And h4. I mean, knight on e7 and d7 aren't really protecting those squares uh, on the a h shrine. So I guess it might some some minor minor sense to play like this. I think we can just take. I'm not bundering something. I mean, of course, this is check, but just king f1, I think. Bishop e3, the knight f6, and g4. Don't really want to allow that. And after knight f6, bishop c4. And I mean, there is some compensation for sure, but I mean, I'm sort of happy. How about playing h5 now? Okay, let's try it. It probably doesn't work for 1,000 reasons, but still, at least it makes sense you know, with my with my play so far. Bishop e6 is a very cool answer. Still, I can maybe take on g6. Okay, let's have fun on this. This is too much for him. Knight g5, maybe. Rook 7 now is a refutation of my idea. But after rook 8, there is a trap. After rook 8 I wanted to play queen d3. Now it isn't possible anymore, of course. Um, yeah, but still, I mean, I can play, let's say, queen d2. Yeah, but in hindsight, of course, g 5 was an empty shot. Let's play it through h3, because I feel I'm going to blunder this rook eventually. Let's play like this. Very technical chess after all of this crazy stuff. All right, so I will play again.
Okay, I want to be black and I want to play a specific open, uh, opening, which isn't possible after e4, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, let's play the other hand. Can I freeze, of course, the minor line? I think there are many actually setups for black, but c6 is uh, slightly worse, but playable. Let's see, free. I mean, I don't know about this move. How about 97 now? I think it's okay. I have to watch out, of course, for knight takes f7 tricks, but I assume they don't work now. And after knight f3, it must be um, totally fine for me. We can play just knight f6. Scourge war developing. Yeah, actually, um, actually, I was hoping to make queen d5 work. Like, possibly, I mean, the the best if there would be some trap involved with queen d5, like double attack. But um, after rook b7, let's say, but. Yeah, it didn't, didn't really work. And I think I'm very comfortable, especially now, because the pawn c3 is hanging and he has to play like c4, I think. Actually, c4 runs into knight, takes a 4 and f6. It's not totally hopeless because it's c5, but... Uh, yeah, c5, bishop f8, g6, and queen a5 is probably waiting for me. Okay, now I get a pawn. Yeah, but it was probably less arrival for him anyway. Okay, b6. So now rook d6 was a useful improvement, I believe. After queen c6, still there isn't a queen f4, anything direct. Just rook c8. Rooks should be superior to Queen here, especially given the fact that I have some um, extra pawns. No time to consume.
and there shouldn't be any any perpetual. It's rather going to be checkmate. Oh, I've got nine seconds, didn't, didn't realize that. And after rook h2, there might be actually a perpetual, but probably. All right, okay, so now the final game. Um, okay, let's see. The man is here, okay, so the final game, as you wished for, Polish opening. Actually, I mean, don't have any clue what's the origin of this name. Unless it was called like this because it's a stupid opening. Actually, before in the first move, I mean, some also call, call it Polish, but um, it's rather, I mean, uh, I've been told it's Sokolski or wrong with an opening. Polish is, I mean, strict Polish is just B5. Which is, of course, like not so great move, but after D4, Knight F6, Knight F3 in B5, I guess it's like normal choice, like um, upgraded Polish opening, one could, one could call. Okay, so how about that before now? There might be some issue with this, so let's play d 5 instead. Let's play h6 because um, maybe a5. It's kind of slow, but I want to stabilize everything on the queen side. I might eventually even castle. Uh, I mean, queen side is kind of sounds like a crazy idea right now, but who knows? d6. It's actually pretty okay for me. Queen g4, what's that? And so now I guess, ah, at d6, well, that would, would be embarrassing. Just totally, totally miss it. Okay, let's castle queen side anyway. Because now, okay, say queen takes g4 is in the thread, but f5 is sort of threat. And if he, move, if he moves his queen, then um, then potentially I can take on d4. Yeah, so we took, took him by surprise, which is um, at the very least worth it. Let's play five. G5, just ignoring this knight of C5, which is beautiful, but um, not doing very much. And I guess G4, maybe it's too much. Let's play H5. And they say a threat is stronger than its execution. Maybe it's also very clear. Yeah, it's actually pretty solid. Like I don't see any particular concern with my um with my king so far. Okay, taking this pawn was um 
sort of necessary, I think, because it was just corking my attack. Um, and now, what about f4, f3? King d8. Bit of a shame to play King d8, but what to do? And let's go crazy and play g3. That's very, very, very unpleasant for him at the very least. But probably, potentially, even might be lost. I mean, there is some knight takes e6 trick, but I mean, I can just take on e6 and after bishop takes e6, I have more. Uh, just rook takes g2, rook takes d 2 it's game over, basically. Or maybe not because it's bishop d5 at the end, but something should pop up eventually. Okay, now rook takes g2, rook uh, takes e 2 is the idea. Okay, so with that nice accent, um, yeah, I will finish with this. Yeah, thank you for your time and attention. And um, I, of course, haven't managed to answer to all your questions. And yeah, I have no idea how I will celebrate winning the candidates, but once I win it, I, I will tell you guys. So um, yeah, thanks and uh, and see you around. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with uh, Magnus and the you know, his, his non-chess team. So I see it's some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> <laughs>